Now, if you're watching this, I assure you, nothing is behind you. No monsters, no demons, no ghosts, nothing. Especially when you feel fear jolt behind your skull, traveling so fast down your spine that the earth feels your fear in the bottom of your souls. Even when your shoulders quiver and you hear voices from unlit windowsills or see things floating. <coughs> Nothing is there. I spent summers at Mahayana Buddhist temples to study Buddhism with monks. I swear some of those temples were haunted. Living conditions in some cases were quite bleak, like hordes of skittering cockroaches in an unfinished kitchen when all you really wanted was a drink at two in the morning. Another phobia, this time hissing insects, added another mental scar. As a 10-year-old, you are quite gullible, especially when monks are telling you metaphorical stories. However, they tell you the ghost stories are real and you believe the terrible old men. In this instance, it was Lincoln, Nebraska, summer 2001. My 10-year-old self thought it was a great idea to order four large cheese pizzas to be delivered to the temple. Of course I was punished, but at least we got pizza for a week. <laughs> at the time, one of the monks was telling me a story involving this monster in Buddhist cosmology called the Hungry Ghost. Wang Tan, which is my Buddhist name. Do you know why we do afternoon ceremonial chanting with the Zhao? For those of you that don't know, Zhao is a Vietnamese for kanji, a soup made of oversaturated rice and water. An overwhelming intensity from such a skinny, elderly monk. His magnified eyes blasted through his thick glasses, making me want to pee my pants. <laughs> Fortunately, I didn't. Is it the same as the 5 a.m. chanting? The, or the 7 p.m. chanting? Or the punishment chanting? <laughs> I was a saucy, energetic kid. At 3 a.m., meet me out in the hallway, and I will take you to the attic and tell you a story. May I have a bowl of chow? I'm still kind of hungry. He paused, changing his aura in air before simply saying, no. I set my alarm, went to sleep, and woke up. Wang Tan took a jail. The monk knocked and asked if I was awake. Yes. I opened the door and there was the monk, candlelit lantern in hand. I saw him look over my shoulder outside the window and he seemed displeased, turned pale, almost. I felt another chill but decided not to look back. Come on, we need to go to the attic quickly. Whatever you do, don't look back. Why the hell did he say that? Strangely, it's 3 a.m., but I hear the chanting of monks below? I followed the monk's candlelight down the dark hallway where cobwebs suddenly hit my face. My fingers now laced with webs, my feet felt the icy cold wood despite it being summer. I learned to walk on tiptoes to avoid noise, but creaking was inevitable, and once again that damn jolt sparks my back. The monk said, don't look back. His voice uneasy, pausing the steps. Did he feel it too? We resumed down the rickety mothball smelling corridor. His robe sleeves fell onto his scrawny shoulders as he pulled onto the string attached to the ceiling. Ladders descend as makeshift stairs. I finally got to turn around and look down the hallway before climbing up, but of course, nothing. Just the darkness, my imagination, and the echoes of chanting monks. The attic seems to be storage space, as there are 10 or 20 plastic bins stacked neatly around. Here we sit facing each other on a quilt with a lantern in the middle. Wang Tan, do you know what Ngao we are? I shake my head, and he goes to explain that in Vietnamese the Ngao we are the pretas, better known in the Buddhist world as hungry ghosts. He goes on to describe these hungry ghosts with stomachs ten times the size of their heads and necks thinner than a string of hair. What does that have to do with the Jiao? The candle blows out. Of course I screamed, but I calmed down because relit. It flickered. The monk yelled at me, saying not to look behind once more. Did I say something wrong? 
The monk says that the Ngawi are beings reincarnated into ghosts. Because we guide spirits of the families that come to us, Ngawi are ghosts who too want to be reincarnated. And for that reason, they are drawn to our funeral ceremonies. So we have to help them. Their stomachs represent their insatiable greed. Every time they attempt to consume food, it bursts into fire. We chant to dispel the flames. So they can eat in peace. My stomach begins to make noises and I'm starting to become really hungry all of a sudden. I'm really scared. Do not look behind you. The monk leans in and whispers in my ear. Not all now we are evil, but the ones that are desire a human body. They want to possess it. Wang Tan, I am telling you, a Ngawi is following you, and if you look at it, it will possess you. That's what he said. He said he had to conduct an exorcism, and that the monks downstairs were waiting for me. In the other ear, I hear a sinister whisper of a raspy voice. I'll be waiting in your sleep. Feed me, I'm so hungry. The monk lunges at me and holds me tight. Do not look behind you, please, he begs. I close my eyes and swallow, but only a burning dryness with no spit in my thin throat. I felt a weird force overcome me, and in moments, the monk's grip on my shoulders ripped away. He was floating in the air, just floating. His eyes were bleeding, and he was screaming. Not like a human, but like an animal. And then his body was flung into the bins. I looked back. Thank you for visiting our video. I'm Beth Cleary. I'm Peter Ratcliffe, and this is Orso, the library dog. We are the co-founders and co-executive directors of the East Side Freedom Library in St. Paul, Minnesota. Our mission is to inspire solidarity, work for justice, and advocate for equity for all. If you enjoy our programming and want to support our work, please visit our website, eastsidefreedomlibrary.org.